I'd already had a couple of sightings under my belt and uh, was uh, <coughs> working the hot zone quite regularly as often as I could. And uh, there was a husband and wife uh, who were friends of mine. I knew the husband fairly well and uh, the wife I kind of knew. But, you know, I knew her by name and by face, but, uh, you know, we didn't really have any kind of a relationship as far as solid friends. She was a skeptic, complete skeptic. Um, she didn't uh, believe in Bigfoot whatsoever. And uh, I had taken her husband out a couple of times Bigfooting. And he had experienced uh, some screams and, and uh, he even found a footprint on his own <clears throat> but she still didn't believe and uh, so on the next trip <clears throat> she decided she had enough of this nonsense so she just uh, she wanted to go on the next trip that her husband and I were going to go on and uh, so we took her and we went up and we set up our camp and in the hot zone and then we went riding, riding around and to find a spot to get out and do a little hiking and looking for Bigfoot. Well, we stopped and we walked down to a creek where there was, you know, plenty of water. And we found this great big old spruce tree. And it was a perfect shelter, natural shelter. The spruce limbs hung low over the area and underneath it was nice and uh, kind of like uh, peat on the ground. And something had uh, made a nest under there. It was about uh, two feet thick and about eight feet long and about four feet wide. Made out of uh, smaller twigs and uh, leaves, pine brows, and that kind of stuff. <clears throat> we looked at that, and then right next to the, the bed was a deer carcass. The deer carcass uh, had been stripped down. The uh, head was missing, the little front legs were broken. The uh, hide had been peeled down over its hind legs, and all the the meat had been systematically removed from the carcass just leaving the skeleton. It was pretty clean. It was a typical case of uh, a deer kill by what we figure is Bigfoot. Anyway, she was uh, saying, well, a lion can do that, a bear can do that, wolves can do that, coyotes can do that. And I'm kind of thinking, no, Generally speaking, if it's one of those types of kind of carnivores, uh, the, the body gets ripped apart. Uh, you know, there might be parts of the rib case left together, but but not the entire skeleton minus the head. And so she wouldn't believe that. And as well, we sat there discussing it. I looked over and saw what I thought was a footprint. And I went over and asked her to go look at it. She walked over there and looked at it, and it was a footprint. It was probably about 17 inches long, but it was very nice, very clear and crisp. And yeah, you could count the toes and everything. She looked at that, and she kind of reached down and compared her hand size inside the print, stuff like that. And uh, so she says, well, you know, that still doesn't prove anything. So we went about our business, and uh, during the evening, we went back and, and uh, set up camp. We were sleeping in different tents. Uh, the husband and wife were in a tent right next to mine. There was only about two feet clearance between the two tents. And uh, I heard the... About one o'clock in the morning, I heard it coming. Thump, 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 and then something hit the tent. And then thump, 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 thump. We 
just had a, uh, you know, <laughs> kind of like a doorbell ringing. <laughs> or somebody runs up, rings your doorbell, runs off. <clears throat> and it happened so quickly. Uh, and it wasn't my tent that it slapped, it was theirs. And, uh, of course, I heard it coming. I heard them going, what was that? And I said, well, you know, somebody just said hello to you. And I don't know if that was the straw that broke the camel's back, but the next morning, she wanted to leave. They went home, and he's never been allowed to go back out with me. So, I think I have a skeptic that won't admit that she's been convinced.